All right, so this is the Foundations of Math 20, <coughs> Chapter 5 review on the statistics. And uh, frequently asked questions we'll go over here. <coughs> Excuse me. So what is normal distribution? And what are its properties of normal distribution? Girls, paying attention, please. Thank you. We have uh, the data is 50% of the data is above the mean. Remember, the mean is right here. Okay. A little Greek letter there, that's the mean. We, uh, we also show it as X with a line of above. 50% is below the mean. So that's this, right? Exactly half of the data is uh, below and half the data is above. You see the breakdown here of the, uh, the curve, right? So there's approximately 68% of the data is within one standard deviation. So right here, see the 34 and 34? From the mean, whatever the standard deviation is, if it's a test score, let's say the average is 80 and the, the standard deviation is 5, that means that the dispersion of the data, okay, 68% of all of the other tests would be between 75 and 85. That's what that means. So that's so you can do that. Also, I guess I skipped this part, the measures of central tendency as the mean, median, and mode will be identical if it's perfectly distributed or very close at least. All right. 95% uh, is within two standard deviations. So again, if we went back to that test example, 80% average, 5% standard deviation. That means that 95% of all the tests would be between, um, you know, uh, 70 and, and 90. I guess it's two standard deviations and so on. With a small sample size, like I say, lots of times things aren't perfectly distributed this way. And so that's not always the case. But with larger sample size, um, this is very accurate for the normal distribution. And then 99.7% would be between the mean and three standard deviations, like up to, up to that point. Okay? Any questions about that? All right, standard uh, normal, normal distribution. Okay, what about Z-scores? Z-scores are another big thing in the, in the chapter. The Z-score represents um, the distance of the data value from the mean of the set. So, and it's measured in standard deviations. <clears throat> so if your test score, going back to that example, you know, was 85, okay, then you would have a Z score of, what would your Z score be? Okay, so let's take a look at the um, Z score table. Do I have a table here? No. Okay, let's take a look at this. Okay, so Z score is here. If you, if you have exactly the score that's on the mean, right, what is your Z-score? Uh, you have a Z-score of zero because you'd be right on the mean, right? So as you, go, as you go up from the mean, your Z-score gets larger in the positive direction. So you have a question or a comment? Uh, yeah. On yeah. the test, will we have this? You will, yeah, he, no, you're going to have to memorize this table for the <laughs> test, yeah. No, yeah, on the test, uh, you will either have this table printed out, or at least you'll have sections of it that you'll refer to, yeah. Good, good question, but no. And you don't have to write this on a cue card or anything. <laughs> Copy it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Okay, so back to, the, back to the question then. If you had an 85, so you were the mean plus one standard deviation exactly, how could you figure out what Z-score you have? Is that easy to do, or...? Like, is it one? Is, it, uh, one? is your Z-score 1? Is your Z-score 1.5? Because it's, I don't know. What would it be? H and how could we figure that out? Any ideas? No? Okay. That might be a question uh, for you to answer. As a matter of fact, I'll let you do that right now. Take a minute and find out exactly what Z-score you would be if you were exactly one standard deviation above. So one of the methods is to look at this uh, look at this table right here, right? And you say one standard deviation above would be exactly 50 plus 34 or 84% um, uh, of the data would be below. That's the number we're looking for. So one of the ways you could do that is look at the table. And 84% would be somewhere between uh, this number right here, which would be 0.99 and 1.00. So if you said, you know, 0.9, uh, 
um, nine five or something like that, that would be pretty close to 80%. But yeah, 1% or, or one standard deviation, um, a Z score of one would be above that. Could you do it with the, uh, could you use the formula right here? Could we figure it out with the formula? Did anybody do that? Okay, well, could we? Here's a Z score. Do we have all the information here? We do, don't we? Uh, Z right here. The mean, or sorry, the data value here, yours is 85. The mean is 80. The standard deviation is 5. So what is that? That's 5 over 5. And it's 1. Okay? So you could calculate your Z score um, right there. One standard deviation is 1. So, <clears throat> so yes, 1 is the answer. And those would be two reasons why. Any other reason you can think of? No? Okay. Because remember, your Z score is how many standard deviations above the mean you are, right? That's 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 right kind of what we said right here. The distance of the data value from the mean measured in standard deviation. So a Z score of one means you are exactly one standard deviation above. All right. Okay, here's the, here's the uh, third question. How do I compare two values from two normally distributed sets? Okay. So if we have normally distributed sets, so there's two values and you know their respective, uh, the means for, the, for that data, you know the standard deviations and such. Uh, you can calculate the Z scores. And so we can compare um, the Z score. Whichever one has the higher relative value would be, um, would be the uh, value that would be uh, greater in whatever sense. So if we're talking about house prices, um, in this case, right? And here's one house price, and here's another house price in Edmonton and in Calgary. The mean and the standard deviations for the houses in the city are shown in the table. And if you calculate the Z score, you can see which one is higher. So when you compare the Z scores, that basically takes into account uh, the uh, both sets of data, right? And how they compare. So um, if we have two, two house prices, prices, but the average price is lower in Edmonton than it is Calgary, or and or the distribution is closer or further apart then really to compare the two prices within the markets that they're in Z scores are are a good idea to compare okay so the house in Edmonton has a greater relative value because it's uh, it's higher than uh, it has there's more houses that are less value than it right compared to the one in Calgary so even though it's a it the price is less okay so that's how we use Z scores to determine things. Okay, uh, finally, the last point. What's the difference between margin of error, confidence interval, and confidence level? That was the last sort of section that we did. Um, when th the purpose of a poll or a survey is to gather information that can be used to make predictions about a population. So again, a survey, we are making predictions about the larger population. So if in a recent telephone poll, 33% of Canadians thought that Olympic athletes who were caught using performance enhancing drugs should be banned, the results uh, were accurate to within 3.1 percentage points, 19 times out of 20. If this, is the, if this is a stat that you see, then what this means is that the number that they've come up with, their best guess for this number of the population is 33%. But they realize that because this is just a sample, there may be some error, and that error is represented as the, uh, um, the uh, margin of error right here. So plus or minus 3.1% from this 33. So really, it could be anywhere between 29.9 or 36.1. That's where the real answer they feel is, somewhere in between there, but pretty close to 33. And of course, the last part, this confidence uh, level, means that if this were repeated 20 times, they would be confident that 19 out of those 20 times, the actual answer for the population would be within that, that confidence interval. So again, they're saying they're 95% confident that the actual value is pretty close to 33, but for sure, 95% accurate, it's, it's between these two numbers. Okay? So there's your value that you're looking for, the actual number you're interested in. Then there's a margin of error that's on either side of that value. How far apart you know, is that error? The confidence interval would be the lowest possible to the highest possible. 
And then the confidence level, they're saying, you know, 95% of the time, uh, if we did the same thing, this is exactly the, the results that we would get, sort of thing. Or the answer should be within this confidence interval 95% of the time. All right? So <clears throat> that's a bit of, uh, that's the question. So the frequently asked questions, um, a little bit of review there for Chapter 5, and obviously you have your assignment questions, and if you need to go back and look at any other videos, uh, you can take a look at the sections in there that, have, that are a little more specific. Uh, you might notice that there are some sections that really weren't covered in the frequently asked questions, but the first uh, number of sections, uh, you know, kind of lead up to all this. So, do you have any other questions? Yeah. Um, Um, you will, you will be, are, okay, so the question was, are the margin of error and the confidence level always given? The confidence level, here you're not going to, I mean, they might, they might tell you it's 95% of the time, so how many times out of 20 does that represent? Something like that. You won't be able to calculate this, I don't think, for any of the questions you'll give. They might say the confidence interval is such and such to such and such, what is the margin of error? So you might have a question like that. And if that's the case, you just take the range there and then divide it in half, and that's your margin of error. So they'll ask you questions about it, but there's no formula really for it, no. Um, and I think that was really from 5.6, so the questions that I gave you in 5.6, I think, would be, uh, you know, questions that you might see on the exam. Does that answer? Anybody else? No? Okay, so that's a little bit of review for you for Chapter 5.